Dennis Corker here bringing you a Bible blessing from Ephesians chapter 1 and today we'll be covering verses 21 to 23. Now Ephesians chapter 1 can be broken down into two main sections. Once we get past the introduction in the first two verses, we have our first section verses 3 to 15 where Paul offers to God really an explosion of praise in appreciation for all that God has intended and blessed us with in Jesus Christ, the inheritance and the riches that are ours freely by grace through the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And then when we come down to verses 15 to 23 at the end of the chapter, the second main division, Paul is praying and expressing a desire that those who are in Christ, believers in Jesus Christ, that they would come to a deeper appreciation of all that they possess in Jesus Christ. I'd like to take a moment now just to invite you to subscribe to Bible Blessings Ministries. We're a verse-by-verse -verse Bible teaching ministry, and it's important for each of us as believers to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we do that by studying the Bible verse-by-verse. -verse. And as we study the Bible and become more familiar and expert in its contents, we're better worshipers of God. We appreciate his character and attributes more deeply. And we're off, able to offer worship that is acceptable to God. It also makes us better servants in the home setting, the family setting, the church setting, or even in the work setting where we're able to share the gospel with our peers. So subscribe now, please, to Bible Blessings. Hit the notification button and you'll receive notification as each new video is uploaded. Now, let's read our verses that uh, we've set aside for our study for today. Verse 21, and this is speaking of the exaltation of Jesus Christ. Far above principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is the body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. And if we could just give this one word, a one word description, we might say it's the supremacy. Supremacy is the key word here, the supremacy of Jesus Christ and Perhaps as a subtitle, we might say the triumph of Jesus Christ or the victory of Jesus Christ. And when we think about the triumph of Jesus Christ, it's important for us to remember that we as believers are in Christ. We are part of the body of Christ. It expresses that here in verse 22. He put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body. We are part of the body of Christ Christ is the head. Christ was crucified on the cross for our sins. He suffered there, the just for the unjust. He suffered to atone for our sins and for the sins of all the world. And we know from the gospel accounts that Christ was buried. And on the third day, he rose again, according to the scriptures. And then after 40 days, he ascended into heaven. And today he is seated triumphantly at the right hand of God. And Paul tells us here that he is seated far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. So there's the supremacy of Jesus Christ. There's no other creature that is a threat or a contender that might successfully challenge the supremacy of Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us that his name is a name above every other name. And I could read that for you. It's Philippians chapter two, verses nine to 13. Now this is a cross reference for our reading here today. It says, therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every other name that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth 
and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Christ is supreme. He is peerless. He has no successful rival and no one or no thing or principality or power can successfully challenge his lordship. Now this is very encouraging for you and I for we are in Christ and his triumph is our triumph. His victory is our victory. And even though at the present time we may suffer trials and tribulations and even persecutions and severe difficulties in this world, we may suffer loss in various ways and difficulties that we don't anticipate. Yet the Bible tells us that we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. And that is so because we are in Christ. We have been raised together with him and we have union with Christ and we are part of the body of Christ. Now, Paul also taught the same principle and I'd like to read it for you in Romans chapter eight, verses 33 to 39. And he said there, who shall bring anything to the charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword as it is written? Uh, for your sakes, we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Because Christ has conquered, we conquer also. He has, we have conquered through him and in him. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. Now these are beautiful words of encouragement for the believer. Because Christ has been exalted, we are exalted. Because he has conquered, we are conquering through him. And there is nothing that shall be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. So this speaks of the security of the believer and that's a word of comfort for us today. We are secure in Christ. We are no longer in jeopardy in the sense that our souls are secure in Christ. We are covered in the blood. We are washed in the blood. We've been regenerated through faith in Jesus Christ. We've been reconciled to God. We've been accepted into, in the beloved. And he makes intercessions for us at the right hand of God, even today, to secure us against the forces of evil that we're called to engage with in spiritual conflict. So Paul speaks about principalities and powers and might and dominion. And this reminds us of Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, where Paul said that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and the rulers of darkness in this world. So we're still engaged in a conflict. Christ has conquered, but we're still engaging in the battle. But God has provided us that armor and our ultimate victory is secure. So these are words of great encouragement to think about how that Christ is exalted, he's supreme, he is triumphant, and we will triumph ultimately through him. And it talks about that, and we'll think about that a little bit here. Uh, Paul, or rather, if we look to the book of Psalms, it speaks in a prophetic way about the triumph of Jesus Christ, his lordship, his sovereignty, and his ultimate rule over all creation. And this is what it says there. And you have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. And that's Psalm 8, verse 6, speaking prophetically. And I believe that psalm is a messianic psalm speaking of the millennial kingdom, the future millennial kingdom where Christ will reign over all the earth. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is thy name in all the earth. It's a name above all other names and Christ will conquer. 
He will subdue all of our enemies and all of his enemies, and he will reign a thousand years on the earth. And then another cross reference from the book of Psalms, which is prophetic. It says, the Lord said to my Lord, set up my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. And that's where Christ is seated today. He's completed the work that the Father gave him to do. He's atoned for the sins of the world. He's been risen or he's been raised from the dead and we have risen together with him. We are seated together with him in heavenly places and in time to come, he will exert that authority. He will judge and subdue his enemies and make his enemies his footstool. Now that final conquering of Christ that final rule and reign of Christ is yet future. And that's spoken of in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 8. And it says there, speaking of the exaltation of Christ and has his being at the right hand of God, the end of the verse says this, For in that he put all things in subjection under his feet, he, not, he left nothing that is not put under him. So we're living in a, a time of parenthesis. Christ came, he suffered, he died, he conquered, he has ascended and seated at the right hand of God. We now live in the age of grace or what we commonly call the church age, the dispensation of grace. And as this dispensation comes to a close, the church will be caught up and raptured. There will be a seven-year period of tribulation and then the millennial kingdom where all things then will be put under his feet. He will rule from Jerusalem and reign from a thousand years. And that's really what the tribulation period is all about. It's the day of the Lord. It's the day when the Lord will judge his enemies. Satan will be bound a thousand years at the end of that tribulation period. Babylon, the great whore, will be judged and destroyed. And the false prophet and the antichrist will be cast alive into the lake of fire. So Christ has triumphed and we have triumphed in him. Now, verse 22, and he put all things under his feet. We went over that and gave to him to be the head over all things to the church. Now, this is an important little phrase to think about too. We live in the church age. Christ is the head of the church and he's the only head of the church. We have a Pope in Rome, really, who's a, uh, usurping the headship of Jesus Christ. But true believers know only one head, and that is Jesus Christ. And he fills the body, as our verse says here, verse 23, which is his body, the fullness of him that fills all in all. Every believer is indwelt by the Holy Spirit. Paul had already said here in verse 14, that those who believe are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise unto the day of redemption. The Holy Spirit indwells us, and as we walk in the Spirit, we are filled with the Spirit. There's a difference between the baptism and the filling of the Spirit. We are uh, baptized once when we believe in Jesus Christ. We're baptized and sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. We're baptized into the body of Christ. But it's up to us to walk in the Spirit so that we might be filled with His Spirit. And as the universal church, as we think about the universal church, each member is filled with the fullness of Jesus Christ. So this is the special theme in the book of Ephesians, our union with Jesus Christ. And it's a wonderful thing to think about when we think about the supremacy of Christ, the triumph of Christ and our union with Christ, we can take confidence or we can be assured that we will prevail against all our enemies and we will live and reign with Christ forever and ever. So this is today's Bible blessing. This is Dennis Corkery. Thank you for joining me. And please don't forget to subscribe to Bible Blessings Ministry.